Now that we've completed the net cash from operations calculations, let's go to investing activities. And in this case, the only investing activity we're going to look at is our additions to fixed assets. So we want to look at the fixed asset account. And we see that from the end of 2010 to the end of 2011, our net fixed assets went down by $30,000. So if that was the only piece of information we had, we might conclude that we sold some equipment and gained $30,000 of cash by selling equipment. But that's not all that happened. We've got to also look at the depreciation account. So let's start with last year's net fixed assets of $461,000. If there had been no additions or subtractions to our fixed assets, that is no purchases of fixed assets or sales of fixed assets, we would have depreciated, we know we depreciated $159,000. We would have been left with net fixed assets of $302,000. But we don't have $302,000. We have $431,000. So what happened last year, we started at four sixty-one. dollars We, reduced, we de reduced the fixed assets by depreciation of $159,000. We were left with, or would have been left with, $302,000. But we obviously bought... The difference here, which is $129,000, we bought $129,000 of assets to bring our total net fixed assets to $431,000. As a result, we're going to record a negative $129,000 here for our investing activities because that was a use of, a ca use of cash by adding to our fixed assets. Having recorded our additions to fixed assets, which of course are a negative cash flow because we spent money or spent cash, we turn to the last segment of the statement of cash flows, and that is financing activities. And here we financed the company or had two financing activities. One was a change in long-term debt, and the other we paid some cash dividends. So first, for the increase in long-term debt, you see that we started the year at 258898 We ended the year at 404290 So we had a net increase in long-term debt of $145,932, subtracting one from the other. Because this was an increase in debt or a borrowing, when you borrow money, someone gives you cash. So we will record this as a positive number or that is an increase in cash for the year. Having recorded the increase in long-term debt, we can finish by computing the payment of cash dividends. So this information has been provided to us here, I've done the calculation for us, but real quickly, we paid a dollar ten, or the company paid a dollar ten cents per share in dividends. There were twenty three thousand shares outstanding, and if you multiply the two together, it means that they spent cash of twenty five thousand three hundred dollars in dividends, and again, that's not reflected. In anywhere else on our income statement, you can get to it doesn't change net income, so we don't we don't learn by looking at net income whether dividends were paid or how many dollars were paid in dividends. So here is our completed statement of cash flows. We can see that the net change in cash was seven thousand dollars, and that corresponds to what we knew going in what the change would be and 
these numbers all add up. We changed 7,000 by 7,000. We started with 65,000. So our cash at the end of the year is $72,000, which again corresponds to our ending balance sheet. So a quick review, we made some money via cash from operations, our operations. We spent $129,000 by adding to our fixed assets. And we financed that primarily from increasing long-term debt. So it's possible this company incurred debt on purpose to add to its plant or equipment, which wouldn't be unusual. So now we have, we have a completed statement of cash flows.